people lp2000 right back at you with another video yes 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 welcome back welcome back to another edition of leslie chambers kaiju reviews on behalf of collector monsters and yeah i'm back again with another model kit review <laughs> oh god again as i mentioned in my last video of the koc 1962 40 centimeter resin model um kit review Y'all know I've been on like a model kit tear as of late. Again, I'm still an X Plus guy, but I've been getting more into these model kits. And I mentioned at the very end of the KOC uh, King Goji video that my next video would be this guy right here. So again, you already clicked the title. You know who we're covering here. So without further ado, let's dive here first into this amazing, awesome model kit review. And today we're taking a look at the Resin Chef 30 centimeter model kit, resin model kit, I should say, of the Martha Lara 1964, based off his appearance in the super cool Godzilla film. One of two epic Godzilla films that came out in the year of 1964. 1964's Ghidra the Three-Headed Monster, aka Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster. And as you can see, I have the beautiful kit here in all his glory, or her glory. <laughs> No, Mothra can be a he or a she. It just depends on, um, um, on how they classify him in a certain movie. Honestly, between the two films, and I make no secret, of, no bones about this, I actually prefer the American version to Giza the Three-Headed Monster. And in the American dub, they refer to Mothra as a he or as him. So for the duration of the video, he will be called he. <laughs> I refer to prefer the Mothra as a him. So all your all your Mothra purists out there is gonna be like, technically she was a she in the Japanese version. I don't remember that. <laughs> but again, I'm going by the American version. And the American version, Mothra was a he. But again, this is a great, 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 great kit. I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the guy that hooked me up with this kit, who not only had the kit, but built and painted it for me. Um, Legrandzilla, also known as John Legrand, uh, one of the um, best artists that we have in our community when it comes to building and painting model kits. He has an awesome YouTube channel, Legrandzilla. So again, I want to thank you, good sir, for hooking me up with this uh, model kit. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. And of course, this is a part of the video where normally I would showcase the packaging, you know, on what, you know, how the kit came in and stuff like that. But I got this uh, piece loose. It didn't come with the original packaging. For what I understand, it came like in just a regular box, but it had the uh, this promo card on the box, you know, Mothra Team Resin Chef. Um, production and some Japanese uh, legal jargon. What's interesting about that um, that promo is the fact that they don't have the exact year of this Mothra. Uh, but as you can see here, 
This is basically the Mothra from 1964's Ghidra Threaded Monster. Or you could probably make the case it's probably, um, it, it kind of it came past for the Mothra Larva in 1968's Destroy All Monsters. But the way John painted it is cl clearly the 64 Mothra Larva. And again, you know, this was this was a great, great acquisition. Again, with me acquiring so many model kits as of late. Um, I've always wanted this kit because I've seen this kit pop up on, pop up online, or at least in pictures. I've seen people grab this kit, you know, whatever. And I've always wanted this kit, you know. Um, it was originally made back in 2015, if I'm not mistaken. It was sculpted by Gear, excuse me, Bill Gun Munson. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name, good sir. Um, but he's like, I think, I think the guy behind Resident Chef. And of course, Resident Chef, if you don't know, Resident Chef is a kaiju, um, model kit company. No different than Monster Maker 28, Goro, um, a size okay, um, you know, all these KOC, you know, just another great kaiju collectible, kaiju kit company. And... He has done a few monsters under his belt, quite several monsters over the years. You know, he's done Anger 68, Gabra 69, Titanosaurus, Megalon, King Caesar, a few Godzillas, you know, 65, um, 67, um, 84, you know. And a good majority of his sculpts are good, even though there are some hit or miss ones, I have to be honest here. Um, but by and large, a good chunk of his uh, sculpts are really, really good. The ones that I'm really looking forward to, at least the ones I would like to add to my collection if I'm able to find them, more likely I probably won't. But at the same time, if they do pop up, I would like to add these into my collection. Um, his 30 centimeter kit of the 1971 Godzilla from Hedra, that was an awesome kit. The 1972 Gigan kit, from Godzilla vs. Guy again, again celebrating 50 years um, this year, 50th anniversary this year, I should say. And actually, I saw this kit I mean, in person at G Fest a few years ago. I forgot which G Fest it was, but I did see this kit at the Kaiju Modeler table in the dealer's room, and I, I loved it. I really wanted it, but again, um, didn't have the money for it, you know, whatever. So if, if I'm able to find one in the wild, I may go after that one. He also did one of the 1973 Gigan for Megalon, which there's not too many versions of that Gigan out there, quite frankly, but I think that's the best one that I have ever seen. So again, if I'm able to find that one, I'd love to add that one to my collection. Um, he did one of Mecha King Ghidorah. Yes, Mecha King Ghidorah. And that kit looks amazing, even though right now I'm really waiting for X Plus to bring out one. And they teased one a while back. A lot of people have given up hope that he will come out at some point. I haven't. But if, you know, if it's going to be uh, longer the wait that we're going to have for, for the Mecha King Ghidorah from X Plus, if I find Mecha King Ghidorah from Resin Chef in the wild, then I may go after that one as well. You know what I mean? So there are a few um, sculpts out there of Resin Chef that I would like to add to my collection. Um, only time will tell. But I've always wanted this Martha Larva because, again, I think this is the best Martha Larva, at least of the 64 Martha Larva, that I've ever seen. You know what I mean? It's sculpted perfectly, and it's painted perfectly. And I've always said that when it comes to model kits, you have to have two things basically right on a particular model kit. The sculpt has to be perfect as well as the paint job has to be perfect. And I think um, this kit accomplishes both. More on that later. Um, and speaking of resin chef, this is not my first resin chef piece I have in my collection. I have the 30 centimeter Rodan 1965 from Invasion of Astro Monster, also known as Godzilla vs. Monster Zero. Um, that is an amazing kit. I'm surprised I didn't review that yet. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a, an impressive and amazing version of Rodan, again, from Monster Zero, sculpted by um, Bill Gamunson from Resin Chef, an awesome model kit. And most recently, if you're um, in the know about what's going on as of late, you know, Super Festival happened, I want to say, a couple weeks ago. And, of course, X Plus was there, you know. Since, and we all know Super Festival is basically a model kit show that happens um, every now and then in Japan where X Plus and model kit companies and other pop culture companies come together and showcase new products that are going to be um, released in the future. And as far as X Plus is concerned, there were two things that were really popular amongst fans. One, they finally showcased 
painted pictures of the upcoming 25 centimeter MonsterVerse King Ghidra, aka MonsterVerse Monster Zero 2019. That got a lot of people buzzing. But X Plus also announced at that show, at that show, that they're doing a favorite sculptor's line flying version of Hedra again from Godzilla vs. Hedra, and that looks amazing. And it also, I think it's going to include a tadpole version of Hedra. You know, the evil-looking tadpole version of Hedra. And the uh, the smaller version of Hedra, you know, where the scientists, you know, find pieces of Hedra. They study it, you know, whatever. Um, so I think that's going to be like, um, a, like a three-piece set from the favorite sculptor's line. And if you look closely... This is actually sculpts from Resin Chef. You know what I'm saying? So again, Resin Chef is gonna have a good little um um good little standing in my collection. I'm definitely going after that Hedra when it comes out. I'm definitely going Rick. I would assume because we don't know um what the standard or what the Rick's gonna be. Again, because it's gonna include the swimming version of Hedra as well as the, the smaller version of Hedra, or at least the microscopic one, I should say. I'm assuming that will be the Rick. And if that happens, I'm definitely going after that one. So again, Resident Chef has done his fair share of great looking scopes. Again, there are a couple that are kind of hit or miss with me, but I think a good point, a good chunk of his sculpts are really, really good. And again, if I can find Mecha King Ghidra, if I can find the guy against 73 or 72, I'm going to definitely try and add them in my collection. I may try to look for some when I go to G-Fest in a couple months. Um, and again, I struck a deal with uh, John Legrand. He was offering this up for sale. And again, I'm at a point, not at a point, but I don't have the expertise to build and paint these things like hey, uh, on how they look in the film. So I was like, John, I struck a deal with him and said, hey, you know, you're an amazing artist. I love your work. I'm a fan of your work. If you don't mind building and painting this thing for me, you know, you can kill two birds with one stone. You can get rid of this kit and get some cash on top of it. And we struck a deal. And he is an amazing business person to do business with. Um, he offered me um, progress picks. You know, that wasn't like, you know, I, I didn't hear from him for weeks on end, you know, whatever. Um, he gave me detailed progress on how he was coming along with the kit, gave me detailed notes, stayed in constant communication with me, and he shipped it really, really well. And I would love to collaborate with him again. Um, if I find a kid at G-Fest, you know, he'd probably be one of the uh, first ones I call and say, hey, you mind hooking me up? And I, and I don't think that, that he would mind doing so. So again, John Legrand, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. And that is the backstory about me getting this figure. Now, because he, because again, this is a 30 centimeter Martha Larva, because the Martha Larva is not a big monster, let's say, you know, the KOC 40 centimeter 62, Godzilla, or King Ghidra, or other monsters, you know. This piece, even though it's a great piece, it's kind of more so an enhancement piece. I got it so it can, I can pair it with two other monsters to create a good setup, which you'll find out later on. But even enhancement pieces can be awesome pieces, you know what I mean? And because this is a Mothra larva, of course, we tend to celebrate the bigger version of Mothra, the adult Mothra, the butterfly Mothra, you know what I'm saying? But I also believe that the Mothra larva doesn't get enough love in terms of collectibles or just character-wise, quite frankly. And I think the Mothra larva from 64 in both films provides pivotal moments and was definitely a key player in both those films. Again, I'll talk about that later on. Um, but this piece is really is am really is amazing. Now it comes on top of a base, and as you can see here, the base is colored really well. You know, a rocky base. You could probably assume it's the base um, in the area where she confronts Rodan and Godzilla in Ghidra Three Headed Monster, and the base looks really really good, charcoal gray. You know, with some highlights here and there to simulate the uh, rocky cavern that she's on top of. Looks really really good. You know, nothing more, nothing less. You know, whatever. And I like, you know, figures with bases, you know what I'm saying? Where it's the favorite sculptor's line walking version of the 62 that I got from Mets Plus. It has a great base, you know what I'm saying? The Mechagodzilla 74 has a cool base. The Star Ace Kong's got an awesome base. The Rodan favorite sculptor's line 1956 had a cool base. So I'm, I'm a sucker for bases. As long as the base look good, you know, which tells a story and it's good pre presentation wise, I'm a sucker for, for awesome looking bases. Even though this is a plain base, you know, I can see, you know, I when I see this figure or this model kit, I can see Mothra in Ghidra Threaded Monster at that point where she confronts both Rodan and Godzilla. So the base looks really good. Now let's go on to the model itself, the monster itself. Again, the sculpt look, looks amazing, really is amazing. And normally Mothra's, at least the ones that I have, because I have two other Martha Larva 
a larvae, I should say, in my collection. I have the X Plus 25 centimeter 68 monster that came with the Destroy All Monsters, I think, volume one set, I think. Um, the Martha Larva came with the 25 centimeter Manda. I had that Martha Larva. I had the 30 centimeter Martha Larva 1961 from the original film. And as you know, I take that back. The Mondo Mothra, I have the uh, limited edition, as you know, on the videos in the archives of the channel. And you know, and you know that figure comes with um, two bases, one with a fully intact egg and one where two Martha larvae are bursting out of it. So technically, you know, you can count that. Um, so those are, only those are the only Martha larvae representations I have in my collection. But I have to say, this is my favorite one. <laughs> because honestly, y'all know this about me. When it comes to the 1964 movies, you know, Martha vs. Godzilla is my favorite um, movie in the franchise. Ghidra Threaded Monster is like number four in my top ten. And I love every single monster design from both of those movies. You know, Godzilla, the adult form of Mothra, as well as the Martha, the larva form of Mothra. Rodan, you know, 1964 is my favorite, favorite version, of, version of Rodan. King Ghidra, that's my favorite version or design of King Ghidra. Um, so a lot of favorites for me come out of this year of 1964. But again, that's one of the main reasons I wanted to get this get this kit. Because I think, again, this is my favorite version of Mothra. And this is a favorite, not favorite, this is the best um, sculpted version of the Martha Larva 64 that I've ever seen. And again, I'm glad I have it. But again, I love the pose where Mothra is looking up. And you can, you know, make the argument or make the case that she's looking up at both Godzilla and Rodan or King Ghidra, you know, whatever, versus her, or excuse me, him, laying flat like most Mothra larvae are. So I love that. I love that the pose is really, really dynamic here with him posing upwards versus laying flat on the ground. So the, so the sculpt is really, really great, really dynamic, and I love that. And again, let's talk about the, uh, the paint job. Again, again, that's where... Um, John Legrand comes in. Again, I can't speak enough on on the great work that that guy does. Again, if you have a model kit and you don't know how to paint it and you don't know who to contact, besides David Eric Dopko or Steve Serajoli, contact John Legrand. Again, the guy is amazing. He's a pleasure to, pleasure to do business with. Um, I cannot speak enough on the talents that that guy has. And as you can see here, he's, he's done a perfect job. With Mothra, you know, majority of Mothra is, you know, the uh, standard color of, colors of the Mothra larva, brown, you know, at least of the 64 and 68, I should say. You have that brown, you know, with the uh, highlights of black highlights in like in the middle of each of the other uh, rows of Mothra, you know, whatever. Looks really, really good. The face, you know, you had you had you had the dark shading of the face, you know, in the uh, crevices in the face, you know, on his forehead as well as the uh, as well as the crevices in in the eyes, you know, whatever. Um, her mandibles, the black mandibles, look look really really great. Or at least the mouth looks great. Looks really really awesome. The eyes, the eyes look awesome. And of course, these are red eyes. And of course, Mothra, the Mothra larva made again made two appearances in um, in 1964. Um, and Martha vs. Godzilla at the climax of the film. And, of course, in Ghidra, Three of the Monster. Of course, there were two Mothras in Martha vs. Godzilla, but one, up, one ended up dying and, di and didn't make it into Ghidra, Three of the Monster. I'm assuming the one that gets thrashed by got. But they get thrashed by Godzilla with his tail in the in the final battle of Martha vs. Godzilla. I think that's the one that didn't make it. Um, you can make the case that, you know, by him, or that or at least that Martha Larva being thrashed like that after being born, you know, a few hours earlier, that maybe the trauma, you know, slowly but surely end up killing him off, which is why we got one in Ghidra Threaded Monster. But if you look closely at the eyes from the Martha Larva from 64, they're blue. But by the time we get to Ghidra, they turn into red. And honestly, between the two eyes, I actually prefer the red coloring. You know, I don't know why. I think red just looks better on Mothra. You know what I'm saying? At least the Mothra larva, I should say. Leave the blue for the adult version. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, but I do like the red eyes of the Mothra larva here. And honestly, that's basically it. Again, it's not Godzilla, you know, where you have like a long tail, dorsal plate, you know, tree bark light skin, you know, um, individually sculpted teeth, you know, eyebrows, you know, whatever, or alternate head, you know, whatever. This is real, real simple with Mothra larva here you know what i'm saying and again this is more so an enhancement piece it's not a centerpiece quite frankly and there's nothing wrong with that you know i bought you know pieces that i've used as enhancement pieces before to create setups or to add to a setup and this one's really no different 
But if you're going to add something, you might as well go for the best. And again, I think this is the best version of the Martha Larva, at least from Martha Larva 64 from Geese Revere the Monster that you will ever find. So if you can find one for a good price out there, please do not hesitate to get your hands on it. It's a good size. It's a great model kit. And again, if you don't know how to build and paint these things, contact John Legrand or David Arab.co, Steve Severjoli, Steve Herring, Mark Sang Yang. You know, there's plenty of people to choose from in our community, but at least make John at least at the top of the list because his talents are super amazing. So again, thank you, good sir. I really do appreciate it. So that's pretty much it with the backstory, the sculpt, the base, the coloring, just an awesome Awesome, awesome representation, a perfect representation, if you will, of the Martha Larva 1964. Now, again, I mentioned I did have a few of the Martha Larvas in my collection. So let's do a couple size comparisons before I go into my final thoughts of this awesome model kit. So in the first size comparison, let's bring in all the other Martha Larvae I have in my collection in this first size comparison. So, that do, so let's do that, ladies and gentlemen, right now. Okay, folks, here we are with the first size comparison, or should I say Martha Larvae comparison. And yes, these are all the Martha Larvae collection. I have in my collection, so let's go from the foreground to the background. Of course, in the foreground, I have the X Plus 30 centimeter Martha Larva from 1961. Of course, her debut film, Martha, 1961. Of course, the Man of the Hour, the resident chef, Martha Larva, 1964. Over there to the left, we have the 25 centimeter Martha, 1968, that came with the X Plus Destroy All Monsters Volume 1 set with Manda. And of course, in the background, I have the, uh, the Mothra larvae bursting out of the egg, the alternate head egg that came with the Mondo Mothra 2003. And again, as you can see here, you get an evolution of the Mothra larva. Um, and it's funny, I don't have any Mothra larvae representations from the Heisei period. Not from 92, not from the uh, Mothra trilogy, you know, whatever. But at least with the first three in the foreground, at least you get like an evolution of Mothra through the Showa period. Because again, as you can see here, the Martha Larvae 64 and the 68, they're kind of similar. Of course, they painted differently here, but sculpt-wise, you know, they kind of look the same in a way. I mean, of course, hardcore purists would notice the differences between the two. But again, the 64 can pass for the 68 and vice versa. 68 can pass for the 64. But again, you get an evolution from 61 to 64 to 68. So that's a great show of evolution of the Martha Larvae. And of course, I do love the Martha Larvae from the uh, Millennium Films. You know, whatever. Um, so this is a good, good size comparison. Cool size comparison. The evolution, if you will, of Martha Larvae or Martha Larva. This is cool. This is really, really cool. And again, my favorite Martha Larva is, of course, the Resin Chef. It's no comparison. I love the X Plus. I love the Mondo. But again, John Legrand just put it over the top for me. Uh, so again, if you can find one for a good price, go after it. All right. Now, so let's go with the final size comparison. And let me show you the real reason why I got this Martha Larva. The two monsters I want to pair him up with to create a cool setup. So let's find out who they are right now. And I think you know who they are. So let's do that right now. Okay, folks, here we are. The last size comparison. And again, you want to know the main reason why I wanted to get this Resin Chef Martha Larva 1964? This right here. This was my main goal. This was the end game I had in mind. When John Legrand posted this for sale on Facebook, and when I got him to paint and build this thing for me, this is what I wanted to do. This was the setup that I wanted to create. And as you can see here, I have the two other monsters from Ghidra Threaded Monster. I saw a King Ghidra. Of course, the monster that she had to convince to fight King Ghidra. Of course, the X Plus 30 centimeter 1964 version of Rodan, as well as the X Plus 30 centimeter 1964 Godzilla. And of course, a lot of purists out there is like, that's not the same Godzilla. Well, it is technically it's the same suit design. Of course, the face does not have the playful look he had in Ghidorah. But still, you still can't pull this off. And you can't tell me seeing all three monsters here Rodan, Mothra, and Godzilla. This makes for a great, great setup. And again, this is our last line of, de of defense against the intergalactic evil space demon that just came to Earth, the awesome King Ghidra. But can these monsters work together? Can they work out their differences and work together to fend off this evil space demon? Of course they did. <laughs> Spoiler alert, they did. But again, this makes for a great, great setup. Again, all monsters are all 30 centimeter figures. All of them are from the movie. Ghidra 3 of the monster, at least for the most part, as far as like Godzilla. So this is great. Rodan, Mothra, Godzilla. Again, our last line of defense 
against King Gudra. And this makes for a great, 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 great setup. In my opinion, the perfect setup. And again, thank you to John Legrand for making that happen. So that's it with all the size comparisons. You know, with the Martha Larve here with both Rodan and Godzilla. So again, just because this piece is an enhancement piece, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with having pieces or acquiring pieces that we that you would use to make other pieces look better. There's nothing wrong with that. As long as it gets the, the setup perfect in your eyes, like this has done for me, then this mantra has fulfilled its purpose. And I don't regret getting this guy under any circumstances. And I definitely don't regret working with John Legrand because that man is awesome. Um, so again, this is such an mo awesome model kit of the resident chef Martha Larva 1964. So that's it with all the size comparisons. So let's go into the final commentary portion of the video right now. Okay, folks, I'm back with my final thoughts of the Resin Chef 30 centimeter resin model kit of the Martha Larva 1964. Based off its appearance in the super cool Kaiju Flick, one of two epic Kaiju Flicks that came out in the year of 1964. Ghidra, the three headed monster, aka Ghidorah, the three headed monster. Again, 10 out of 10, this model kit. It's so amazing. Again, just because it's so simplistic because it is a Martha Larva. It's not the adult, beautiful butterfly form of Martha. But still, this is such a cool kit. And again, I think a lot more love should be shown to Martha Larva in terms of collectibles as well as her appearance in the movies, or his appearance in the movies, you know, whatever. Um, he needs more love, in my opinion. And I'm glad that I do have this kit in my collection. Again, thank you to John Legrand. I'm sorry if I thanked you like 15 million times already. But again, I've always wanted this. So in a way, this is kind of like a small mini grail acquisition, which are always awesome, quite frankly. Um, so again, thank you so much. And again, you know, this thing is so photogenic. Where do you want to position him by, by himself on the shelves? Or if you got him up against, let's say, the KOC 64 Godzilla, or up against the Resident Chef 1965 Rodan, or if you have him pet up against Rodan and Godzilla here, or other Mar or, or or other Martha Larvae, I should say. It is such a great piece. So whether he stands by himself or with other pieces, you know, he's amazing on both fronts. He's good by himself, but he can also make other pieces look better and create better looking setups. So again, I'm I'm so glad to have this piece. So again, thank you, John Legrand. I really do appreciate it. Now, when it comes to Mothra, of course, you already know my favorite Mothra movie, my favorite Godzilla movie is, of course, Mothra versus, versus Godzilla. And when I talk about that film, you know, there's so many great things about that film. You know, the special effects is great. The human story is great. Um, the score from Ifakube is great. Godzilla, the Godzilla suit is awesome, you know, whatever. But I've always made a point to um, really talk about Mothra's character in that film, of Mothra vs. Godzilla, when it's revealed that, that she is dying, but she still, still agrees to go after Godzilla to protect Japan and to protect her egg, even though we know she's dying at that point. And I've always said that is a real brave thing for her to do, because you know at that point she agrees to go up against a monster where you know she won't be able to win, but she, she still fights him anyways. And that is a great, 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 great thing. Uh, I think a lot of people need to really talk more about that, her bravery in Martha vs. Godzilla, you know what I'm saying? And of course, you know, at the very end, you know, after the Mothra adult dies, you know, the larvae become the saviors of Japan and they end up stopping Godzilla's rampage, which is so cool. But I also think that she also shows an equal amount of bravery in Ghidra, the three-headed monster, because really, really think about it, without Mothra, Japan would have went to crap. <laughs> <laughs> think about it you know on both sides of mount fuji you got godzilla and rodan they are bickering back and forth and their turmoil turmoil at least their breakdown in, in communication is causing them to destroy nearby villages villages on one side of mount fuji on the other side you got king Ghidra that, that, that just came down from outer space that, that just been unleashed and now he starts destroying his part of japan so you got all these catastrophes going on at once Right? And they come up with the idea of maybe Martha coming in and maybe convincing both Rodan and Godzilla to help fend off King Ghidra. And Martha agrees to do so. And when she comes across Rodan and Godzilla, which again is brave, because now she's going up against two bigger other monsters. One of them that she had an issue with some, some months prior. So really, the fact that she went up against them and tried to calm them down and really successfully calmed them down, because honestly, if you really think about it, Rodan and Godzilla could have attacked Mothra, and there's nothing that she could have been, at least, at least, at least in, the, in her larva state, there was nothing that she could have do, could have done to fend off, let alone one monster, but two of them. 
You know what I'm saying? But it led to a great moment where Mothra really convinces Rodan and Godzilla to try and fight King Ghidra. And I know some people don't really like that scene because it shows the monsters communicating for the first time like humans would communicate, quite frankly. I thought it was a great scene because you really understand Rodan and Godzilla's reluctance to help Mothra because they feel like, you know, why should we help humanity? You know, they've done nothing but try to kill us, so why should we help them? So you understand from that point of view, they would not be willing to jump into the fire to not only risk their lives to protect people they have tried to kill them, you know? But Martha tries her best to, you know, to convince both Rodan and Godzilla to try and fight King Ghidra, and plus they ain't trying to hear it. And again, Martha being, being brave just threw her hands up. But then again, she don't have hands. <laughs> he don't have hands. So she was like, screw it. I'll fight King Ghidra myself. And we already know, Martha, even in her adult form, one-on-one -on -one is no match for King Ghidra. So you already know that in her, in her larval state, in his larval state, I should say, <laughs> there's no contest. There's no way that Mothra Larva could survive a one-on-one -on -one assault with King Ghidra. You know what I'm saying? But again, it's that bravery that I'm talking about. Again, the bravery that, that Mothra has shown in Mothra vs. Godzilla, the same bravery that she, you know, displayed here by trying to convince both Rodan and Godzilla. And then when they don't want to cooperate, she was like, screw it, I do it myself. Even though there's a full, full great chance that she would die doing so, she doesn't care. And I do love that about her character of, of Ghidra 3 of the Monsters. That's why I love that so much, you know what I'm saying? And honestly, you can argue that when Godzilla and Rodan see Martha try to fight King Ghidra, that really inspires them to get on into the fight. They were like, look, we don't like each other, but, you know, we got to help her out. Or we got to help him out, you know what I'm saying? So that was really, 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 really cool. And again, I just love that. I love that character part at least her bravery in both Martha vs. Godzilla as well as Ghidra Threaded Monster, you know what I'm saying? And it made for a great, great moment. It made for a great moment. And honestly, again, because Martha was such a key player into this film, she does provide the final blow, which incapacitates King Ghidra, which gives the Earth Monster the edge for them to defeat him. And honestly, it's the same way that Godzilla was defeated in Martha vs. Godzilla a few months prior. But for some reason, fans tend to hate on that, but they don't really hate on King Ghidra's being defeated here. But they're both the same. The, the premise is both the same. Both bad monsters in both films, the big baddies in both films, get taken out by other monsters, but in a similar fashion where they get webbed up and they get incapacitated and they can't continue to fight. So I find it hypocritical for fans to jump on Martha vs. Godzilla, at least the way Godzilla's defeated in Martha vs. Godzilla, but yet they don't really bat an eye in Geisha or Threaded Monster. But when you sit down and think about it, they're both the same. They're both virtually the same premise. And that's why that, that, that's one of the main reasons why the ending to Martha vs. Godzilla doesn't bother me, because again, it wasn't a physical beatdown on Martha's part. It was just their way of really subduing Godzilla without physically beating him down. Um, at least with Ghidorah, at least, you know, it took the muscle and the uh, heavy hitting from both Rodan and Godzilla to, to wear King Ghidra down. But only when Mothra incapacitated him, incapacitated him by webbing his heads up, that was the final blow that sent King Ghidra away from Earth. And, you know, despite their differences, despite they all, they all had issues with, with each other, they were able to put aside their differences and come together for the common good. And you know what, Godzilla fans? Let's be inspired by Rodan, Mothra, and Godzilla. Let's put aside our differences, because I know we all have them. <laughs> we all have them. Let's put aside our differences, and let's work together for the common good. And if monsters can do it, then I know we can do it too. But again, I love the uh, the bravery of Mothra in both Mothra vs. Godzilla and Geisha the Geisha three headed monster. And again, you can make the case for both. She's brave, or he's brave in both stories. And again, she is a pivotal role, or provides a pivotal role in both stories. And that's why, again, Martha vs. Godzilla is my favorite movie in the franchise. It's why Geisha three headed monster is in my top 10. Number four, in fact, on my top 10 of favorite Godzilla films. And a lot of that has to do with the character of Mothra. He is so brave in both stories, and I really do enjoy that. But again, this is such an awesome model kit of the Martha Lava from 1964, courtesy of Resident Chef, courtesy of the awesome John Legrand Legrandzilla. So if you can find one for a good price, please do not hesitate to go after it. Yes, yes, 
Yeah, so that pretty much concludes my review of the Resin Chef 30 centimeter resin model kit of the Martha Laura 1964. Best of a super cool appearance in the super cool, great film from 1964. At least the other great kaiju film from 1964. Ghidra, the three-headed monster, a.k.a. Ghidorah, the three-headed monster. If you have any questions, hop it down in the comment section. Hit me on Facebook, be a lesbian chamber, we'll definitely go from there. Yes, once again, great, 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 great model kit. Again, I'm on a model kit tear. I'm on a model kit tear. As a matter of fact, my next video will be a model kit. And to give you a hint on what or who that model kit will be, listen to this right here. What is Mechagodzilla's strongest enemy? Godzilla. Quite right. Uh-huh. I think you know who it is. So stay tuned for that video. That should be coming real, 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 real soon. But again, thank you to John Legrand. Thank you so much. You have done me a phenomenal service. And as you can see here with Rodan, Godzilla, and Martha, you have yourself an awesome setup. Again, the Defenders, our last line of defense against the awesome evil King Ghidra in 1964's Ghidra Threaded Monster. Again, if you can find this kit for a good price, please do not hesitate to go after it. You will not be disappointed. Oh my God, it's so amazing. So again, thank you to John LeGrand. I really do appreciate it. And that's pretty much it. That's all I got with this video. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I will see y'all again on this Figure Move Review. All right? Y'all take it easy. <laughs>